This is the story of one man who's never played World of Warcraft and his crusade to conquer WoW Classic so that he could review the game for his YouTube gaming channel in an unbiased, objective manner without any nostalgia goggles. This is the tale of the sexiest night elf warrior coal miner that ever lived and her journey to save Azeroth with her ass. Now why did I pick night elf? Well, I ruled out orcs, torrents, trolls and the undead because why pick horde if I'm already a bad person in real life? I gotta roleplay a little bit. The choice then stood between night elf, midget, manlet and regular human. Now humans are great at everything, but who the fuck plays an MMORPG to be the same dude they are in real life? What kind of reprobate actually decides to make their character human guy? As for the class, you can't really go wrong with warrior. They train constantly and strive for perfection in armed combat. As I'll be able to tell you from my extensive MMORPG experience, that is to say about 800 hours on Flife and more on adventure quest games, I reckon I'm pretty flife pilled at this point, which grants me access to forbidden knowledge. Any class that uses mana is schizophrenic. <coughs> Any class that heals people is for subhumans. <coughs> and the furry classes just aren't my cup of tea. Rogue was also on the table, but I went with Warrior. Anyways, I named my sexy fuck of a character Swakwictus. Don't fucking question it, it's the perfect name. When it came to picking a server, I didn't skip a beat. Nogginfogger was clearly the place for me. After a barely noticeable 3 hour queue time that I had to do twice, I was ready to experience the full blunt force of vanilla World of Warcraft. Alright, how do you fucking play this game? The first thing that dawned on me was that the core element of gameplay is standing and hitting. And in retrospect, I couldn't even do that correctly. You'll notice that I keep pressing 1, enabling and disabling attack mode. If you're a WoW player, I get if this triggers you, but it took me over 10 hours to figure out that I don't have to contract Carpal Tunnel to play the game. In Vanilla WoW, there's no quest markers, and you have to actually read the quests and explore the world to progress. It's almost as if the game developers intend for you to actually play the game as a person who's just come out of a seven year long kerfuffle with League of Legends. This whole immersive, well-designed gameplay is a bit off-putting, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. Being spoon-fed the lore, I take note that one of the very first quests revolves around opening up the borders to allow all the other races into our sacred lands. And I for one am glad to be here in this pivotal moment in time. This is an absolute win and a giant leap for freedom and progress. I'm certain it will have no unintended consequences down the line. I have been seriously poisoned. You must help me. Actually, I would, but you know, I gotta farm mobs. So, you know, good luck. Ishnuala. In his native language, that actually means bless the sacred tree of life. <laughs> Since I had not the faintest idea what I was doing in this game, I decided to domesticate the first player I ran into and make her my WoW GF. Me and Elizabeth started leveling together. Honestly, I consider it a pure stroke of luck that she dumped 14 years of her life into this game. She knew everything, down to the most minute detail of lore. It's honestly impressive. She's the one that taught me that you can take all your clothes off and dance. I Listen, female night elf was the move. Night elves do front flips when you jump and, and listen, all right? I got it, this is, I, 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 I made the right choice. I quickly came to learn that this game is all about partying up with other people and overcoming diversity. And no, I didn't mean adversity. Those darn gnomes can take their asses back to Namerigan where they belong. If the fact that the entire game revolves around standing and hitting is one of the game's weak points, then the atmosphere and immersion coupled with the legendary sound design is definitely one of the strong points. I'm actually enjoying the game way more than I thought I would. The formula is ridiculously simple. You find the strongest thing that won't kill you. Then you stand and hit enough of them till you become stronger. At times, you'll complete certain tasks which usually require you to stand and hit things. 
after which you'll be rewarded with experience and items that'll make you stand longer and hit harder. And I'm not trying to downplay trading and questing with other players, learning skills like alchemy or crafting, or doing questionable things for monetary gains. I'm simply just making the argument that literally all those things and everything else in the game is entirely structured around improving the experience of standing and hitting. In a way, it's like cookie cutter, but with more world building. And I, I kind of like it. It's pretty good. This is where Swag Victor's adventure kicked into overdrive. I fell off the edge of the map, only to discover that the entire starting island is actually this big ass tree, and that you survive the fall into the water, only to be left with a simple choice. Personally, I drowned myself. Starvation just really isn't my thing. Eliza convinced me that my lot in life was to be a coal miner. I would later come to find that I'd fallen for one of the classic blunders. She merely wanted all the animals to herself so she could make bank skinning them. When confronted with the brutal reality of her betrayal, she made it up to me with a naked wetland run. Follow me! Allow me to explain. So Night Elves start in Teldrassil. Later in the game you'd get access to Stormwind, where you can learn useful things like mastery of a two-hand weapon or how to make rat kebabs. Two equally essential skills in life. Once you finish up questing in the starting area, you get access to Darkshore, and from there you can take a boat to Menethil Harbor. But first, you put all your equipment into the bank so it won't be broken by the countless deaths you may have to go through. And also, because then you're naked, and you're gonna be walking for like a fucking hour. You know they say it's lonely at the top, but I sure like the view. You jump off the boat and head through the Bluegill Marsh. It's at this point you're reminded that you're about to encounter a lot of mobs that are much, much stronger than you. You keep walking all the way past the green belt until you reach Thelgen Rock and the entrance to Don Moreau, at which point you sit back and wait for someone else to attempt the wetland run. If they're damnable fools, they won't know they're about to run into the one mob that's pretty much a guaranteed death. Remember to smile from ear to ear as they take aggro and you watch them die in vain about a 20 minute walk from where they can resurrect. Now you're actually in the clear, and the run through Dunmoreau is a breeze. During the walk to Loch Modan, you'll notice that the contrast in colors is just way better in other areas than the Night Elf leveling zones. But as a Night Elf, you can do front flips and socialize with women, and that's a pearly padding if I've ever seen one. <sighs> Alright, I guess you can't find a synonym for silver lining word for word, but I tried. I really did fucking try. Anyways, once you're through with Loch Modan, it's then time to cross the border and enter a place much too cold for two frail, skimpily dressed night elves. You take in the scenery of the snowy mountains as you make the trek to Ironforge. Partially because there's a flight point, but primarily because now you can get smashed with your WoW GF. As you drink yourself into a delirium, you realize it cost all the money you'd saved up in your 13 hours of game time, and it dawns on you that World of Warcraft isn't all that different from real life. Then, in an alcoholically induced stupor, you enter Tinkertown and use a flute to catch some rats that are then turned into rat kebabs. Because let's be honest, did you really have a good time drinking if you didn't slaughter a greasy kebab along the way? That was a rhetorical question. Once you've had your fun in Tinkertown, you take the Deep Run Tram, which runs all the way below the Vanos Gaming Ocean, and then you finally arrive at your destination, Stormwind. So yeah, Stormwind's pretty cool. As an extra delectable addition to the experience, Blizzard fucked some shit up and somehow got the entirety of Kalimdor kicked at the same time, whilst we were on the side of the world that didn't get Thanos snapped. I'll have you know I'm enough of a man to admit it. Alright, I'm having a good time here, this is fucking gameplay. Dumb enough to think I could stand on my own two feet, I parted ways with Eliza. I figured that to truly have an authentic experience, I couldn't have someone walk me through the entire game. I returned to Darkshore and almost immediately proceeded to be softlocked by a graveyard skip for a solid 45 minutes. I'd gone just past this point and died, which changed the resurrection shrine to all the way down here, where the mobs are just way fucking stronger and just kill me. Especially if you take into consideration the fact that all of my armor is now broke but I gotta walk the whole way back. But then every time I revived my corpse, they would just kill me and I would just... 
I would just come up with a new strategy. I, I, why don't I just walk the whole way and wisp form, just, you know, bite the bullet and then I'll just revive there. But, you know. <laughs> what? I went all the fucking way to up there to use the fucking spirit healer and then it, it spirit healed me all the way down here and now I'm in the same predicament and I can't. And, and for 45 minutes and it was at this very moment that I began to doubt the path I'd chosen. Was I really the right type of person to experience this game to a point where I'd have fair grounds on which to even review it? That seed of doubt would taint my mind and eventually bloom to become a jungle of suspicion and uncertainty. Could I in fact be one of those fucking normies that played this game for two weeks and forever after proclaim that it's just not their thing? Only time will tell. All I know is I caved in and had my banging wow GF walk me through a couple more quests and teach me the game just a bit more. Being a beginner in World of Warcraft without any MMO experience in the last 10 years of my life is a bit like choking on a fucking anus. Although whilst it's happening, you realize you're actually kinda into it. Allow me to explain. At first, your coping mechanisms kick in. This game is cookie clicker. I'm just standing and hitting. The Horde players in Ashenvale need a fucking therapist. But then... The part where you're not standing and hitting reels you back in. Which leads you on a pilgrimage of exploration throughout Azeroth. to go to bed at 11 a.m. I ask myself, why did I just spend five hours randomly exploring with no direction when I could have just googled the next appropriate zone for my character? Oh yeah, that's right, because if I try to look up a guide... Warriors were the worst class in the game at leveling. By such a large margin, it's not even close. The warrior is widely known as the worst leveling class or solo leveling class in the game. They are definitely challenging. They have slow leveling, uh, uh, low mobility, low sustain, high gear dependence, dependence on consumables, costly repairs. So let me get this straight, right? Leveling is you going through all the 60 levels. One could argue that's at least a good chunk of the game. Apparently, my class is undisputedly the worst at this, and by a large margin. And the only solution? You need gear, you need gear, you need gear. Warriors need lots of gear. Of which I have none. So this is the current questing experience as a warrior. You attempt to pull only one mob. If successful, you kill it, regenerate your health, and repeat. It truly is fucking rough out here. What then completely demoralized me though was about halfway into the YouTube guide. You want to switch these to strafe left and strafe right instead. That's right, no more keyboard turning friends. This leaves all of your character turning to your mouse actually. They want me to set up key bindings and constantly perform this frame perfect stutter step to optimally kite every enemy. Literal arthritis aside, the day you see me or block trickshot optimal in World of Warcraft is the day you know this game poisoned my soul. I said fuck the hamstring stutter step, I'll just play the game my own way. I finished up all the quests in Darkshore. I'd say the highlights were giving this guy a good time in exchange for food and buffs. Wiping on the group quest where you gotta protect this guy four times in a row, then admitting we need a healer. After which we proceed to wipe a fifth time since our healer simply forgot to heal the guy we were protecting. Certainly a slight oversight. Remember to get past all the murlocs and get the relic before you run out of breath. Pour some jazz powder over the red crystal and that's pretty much all that stood out to me. Ashenvale is bleak and hollow so void of life, and I was desperate to get to a different part of the game. When opportunity presented itself, it almost seemed too good to be true. And it was too good to be true. You see, I couldn't figure out how to finish a quest, and these two malicious druids in my party convinced me that it was actually a whole escort mission, and that I was ready to proceed to the next zone in the game, Ashenvale. Now, Curlonian Evershade walks just at the wrong movement speed all the way deep into Ashenvale. I'm awake. 
I'm awake. He sporadically falls into an emerald dream nap, and you'll encounter a multitude of dumb dumb bad boys along the way. I walked with these people. I walked with these people for 20 fucking minutes for them to turn in their quest, kick me from the party, and leave me alone deep behind enemy lines in a heavily horde contested area. I tried completing some quests, but I kept getting PK'd time and time again. Having been humbled and shook by trials and tribulations, one question remained. Would this be the end of the road for our hero, or would Swak Wictus prevail and conquer? Would Danger Bro turn out to be an absolute normie with not the slightest claim to fame as a certified nerd gangster, or would he get gear, gear, and lots of gear? I guess only time will tell.